Hello. In this series, we shall learn of price optimization based on price elasticity of demand. Now, quite some heavy words over there. However, the key word to note over here is price. So let's break this title into two parts, price optimization and price elasticity of demand. Let's understand price optimization first. So price optimization is basically the use of analysis by a company to understand how their customers will respond to different prices of their products through different channels. It could be an online or an offline store. It is also used to determine that the what the prices should be so that the company can meet its objectives. Now these objectives can be different. Some of these objectives could be to get more profit or get more revenue. And there could be other objectives of the company. Now, depending on what uh, is the intention, uh, the data that is used to be able to come up with these prices can vary a lot. It could be survey data, uh, it could be any other data or the previous sales data. So uh, price optimization basically uses data to, utilizes data to predict the behavior of potential buyers to different prices of a product or service. So the buying patterns, how they relate to the prices of the products. So one of the key questions to ask is, where is this required? So price optimization is required inevitably in any industry that you can think and in any business. Now this includes retail, it can include airlines, banking, hotel industries, banking, in almost uh, all industries or businesses, there are usually a few dedicated individuals which look into the pricing and price optimization. But not only big organization and stores, but uh, also in your local stores. So also in the local stores, price optimization can be uh, used to achieve whether it is greater footfall or greater revenue or greater profit. Now let's ask who needs pricing. Yeah. So we know pricing is required. We've already discussed where pricing is required in these different domains. Um, but now if we speak about the specific teams or individuals that look into pricing. So uh, usually big companies have pricing analysts who uh, based on their experience and domain expertise help in identifying the correct prices of the products that will help company meet their objectives. And these are usually pricing analysts in big company. And if uh, for smaller companies, if there is not a dedicated pricing analyst team, then it's usually the business owners because pricing is a very key aspect uh, to run a business and what you price can make a huge difference in your success. So having the correct pricing is very important. So it's the analyst or business owners usually, right? Now let's go ahead and talk about the strategies to price products. So there are various strategies that can be uh, employed to price products, uh, depending on what your end goal is again. Uh, I think one of the most simplest forms of pricing is cost plus pricing. This is basically uh, you're selling something for say 100 rupees and you decide that you want a 10% profit. So your selling price will be 110. So you would decide this based on what is your total procurement price, the maintenance price, the production price, everything, whatever is the total cost for you, you will add some percentage to it and that would be your cost plus pricing. Then there's again a uh, competition based pricing. This is uh, based on what prices 
your competitions are pricing the products at and you may have a strategy that uh, okay i want to be the cheapest in the surrounding area so i will always price my products one or two percent less than what my competition is pricing then there's also perceived perceived value based pricing as the name suggests this is basically a uh, understanding what value does the particular product have to the customers how the customers perceive this particular product and value accordingly so uh, i guess a lot of uh, luxury based group uh, goods would come in these perceived value based pricing where the price is not based on what was the cost of the materials or how much did it take to actually manufacture something how much does it take to distribute or what is the competition's pricing none of that it is just that oh it's of a higher value to a customer and hence the price also may be more then another way of pricing is also demand based pricing where you anticipate what could be the demand of this particular product and based on that you decide on your prices so if you anticipate higher demand which could be in uh, certain seasons or festivals you would normally price your products a little higher because you know that people are anyways going to purchase it the demand is higher um whereas when you perceive a lower demand if you are able to estimate a lower demand in that case you can lower your prices so then people might actually buy more or you can uh, put in some uh, promotions and discounts that sort of thing then there's also uh, understanding the price elasticity of products and using that to be able to price your products and this is what we will talk about more in this particular series so another question that you may ask is what should i price my products So again this would be based on what is your end goal do you want to increase the number of sales as in increase the total number of goods that you are selling uh on so in that case uh, your profit or revenue is not at the forefront of your head you just want to sell more number of pieces quantity the absolute number or is it that uh, you want more footfall in your store and this is usually the case when there is a new store that is opening up Uh, or even launching online so if you remember when any of these uh, new companies launched uber amazon whenever they are trying to break into a market they have heavy discounts that they are giving to the customers basically because they want more footfall on their website or in their store then uh, it could also be whether you want to increase your total number of revenue or you want to increase your total profit now your uh, total revenue and total profit would be different profit is at the end how much extra money you are making after you remove all your prices uh, cost prices and everything and revenue is again just the absolute number you might want to increase that so uh, we discussed things like based on sales whether you want to increase your sales whether you want to increase your footfall whether you want to increase your revenue or whether you want to increase your profit now uh, while the others are pretty uh, straight forward to understand what strategy to go for whether you want to increase sales footfall or revenue uh, pricing to optimize profit is what we will be discussing in this series so another important question that you must ask is how can i price my products with the sales data that i have so how can i price my products so being a data scientist we are on the lookout of how we can use data to actually uh, do something useful and in this case come up with prices and uh, fortunately sales data that is the receipts are usually available not only with big organizations but also with small stores so sales data is usually available and these are enough to take the first and important step to be able to price concretely based on the previous sales history rather than the gut feel which is the case in most instances yeah especially in small stores the prices will usually be on uh, gut feel so we want to remove that and we want to be able to take more uh, concrete steps in order to be able to price products now products have a property called price elasticity 
so uh, some articles are articles also mean products so some products are elastic while some products are inelastic so elastic products are products whose purchase patterns change based on their price so patterns change based on the price and uh, while inelastic products as you would have uh, guessed are products whose sales are not much affected by the price changes these usually tend to be luxury goods and necessity items the pricing strategy for such products is done entirely differently in this series we shall focus on the plastic products on the elastic products whose past sales data can be analyzed to figure out the relation of how sales change based on their prices